And we are live here on Plus One EXP's Roll for Content channel. My name is Tony Vicenda. I'm Chief Alchemist here at Plus One EXP, which is a weird little brand that multi-classes in tabletop game design, beard, and skincare alchemy in the Bardic College of Content Creation. Our hope and desire is to help amazing designers find great players who love their games and amazing players find great designers whose games they can love. We do that in a lot of different ways, but the most fun way uh, is sitting down with those creators and playing their games. And today we are doing just that. We're sitting down with Giles Pritchett. Um, to play Albert Omelette. Giles, why don't you tell us a little bit about 
who you are, uh, what you do, and tell us about Albert Omelette. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, uh, my name's Giles, and you can find me around the interwebs as Caradoc P or Caradoc. Um, I am a uh, Australian, if you can't tell by my accent. Of course, I don't think I've got an accent, but maybe you guys are picking that up. Um, and uh, I am a primary school teacher and an elementary school teacher. I don't know if that's what you would say in the US. Um, by day, and I also work as a gymnastics coach and a freelance writer, although less of that. Um, and in the last probably year and a half, I've focused more on making my own games. So I've run um, a number of Kickstarters for Zine Quests over the last couple of years, including Corsairs, Rascals, um, and my uh, game, which fulfilled earlier this year, which was Foundlings. And this is my latest uh, stab at game design. Uh, it's a, a game called Owlbear Omelette. Um, it is a, a, re, a sort of a reworking of an older game of mine that I had made. Um, and I've done this for a couple of reasons. I'll, I'll talk about that afterwards. But um, Owlbear Omelette is designed to be a sort of, uh, you know, sort of ideal sort of con game or a... Uh, one shot if you've got, you know, something, you know, a night where a player can't make it or something along those lines. Uh, you could use it also for a mini campaign of a, of a couple of short sessions. Um, and the premise is pretty um, straightly laid out. So our players here are goblins and they are sneaking into the uh, Goblin King's palace Um Rumour has said that the Albert King uh, loves his his uh, Albert Om uh, sorry the Albert King the Goblin King loves his Albert omelets uh, of a morning and uh, our three valiant goblins here are sick to the back teeth of the uh, entrenched social hierarchy that pervades uh, Goblin Goblin Kingdom are uh, making a, a stab at. Um, leveling the field somewhat, uh, not by uh, enacting any sort of social change, but by going after some owlbear eggs for an omelette of their own, an act of rebellion, damn it. Um, so that is the premise of the game, is we've got three uh, goblins here who will be sneaking into the the palace of the owlbear, of the, <laughs> I keep saying owlbear king, of the goblin king, in search of an owlbear egg um, to make an omelette uh, an omelet out of and then... Um, making sweep their escape with said eggs so that's the premise of the game um when it's released it'll be an a6 um sized zine which is a little tiny um booklet and i i really wanted to experiment um with this format my last three games have all been a5 and my and i love i love small games i love a5 um zines and um but I, as I said earlier, I live in Australia, and so um, the price of shipping from Australia and to Australia is exorbitant, to say the least. Uh, I know with my last Kickstarter, Foundlings, you know, the cost of shipping for that game, uh, shipping from Australia, um, was pretty significant. And then even using shipping partners, the the shipping cost was quite significant for my backers. And so hopefully. Um, reducing the size is going to help um, reduce the, the shipping costs and um, make the game a lot more accessible. Um, but A6, you know, brings with it some constraints in terms of size and all of those sorts of things. And so we've got a game that has really got a tight focus on on what it's about and what it does, hopefully. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a little bit about me and uh, a little bit, hopefully, about Albert Omelette. Uh, hopefully it's a little, it's a little clearer than I think it probably was as I'm thinking about what I just said. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, I, I am very excited to play. I love an A6. I love that I can just fit it in my back pocket, uh, for people who don't live in sizes where A's are normal. It's a quarter page, basically uh, sheet size. Uh, and I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite sizes of, uh, of games. Um, the, um, let's meet our other, our other players, uh, the, for nerds, for nerds who like to talk about game sizes. 
is like us. Uh, it's a it's one of my favorites. <laughs> um, uh, let's meet some of our other players. First time joining us as a player, I think we have Alicia because Alicia has been on stream uh, before. But I think this is the first time we're actually getting to play together. Why don't you tell people uh, who you are, what you do, or where they can find you online? Uh, yes. Hello. My name is Alicia. I make games. Uh, you might know my game Paranormal Inc., which is a car from Bidola Bay game, or Camp Flying Moose for Girls of All Kinds, which is a summer camp lumberjanes inspired PBTA game. Um, and uh, when I'm not making games, I am earning my money by being a videographer and pole dance instructor. I do a lot of weird things. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm Canadian. I. It's hot here, not cold for once. And uh, you can find me on Twitter at Alicia Furness. Awesome. Alicia, can you, uh, can you uh, take your audio up just a touch for me? Give me a second. Is that better? Yep, perfect. Um, awesome. And then first time on stream, uh, a phenomenal last minute edition. Uh, <laughs> we got Madge, 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 tell people who you are, uh, what you do, where they can find you online. Hi, I'm Mads. Uh, she, they pronouns. Um, I started off like, you know, seriously doing online role play in on Jason Cordova's actual play channel um, for the between. Um, and then I've been kind of branching out ever since. Um, I also have a podcast stories from Chaos Edge. Very, very new <laughs> in terms of like two episodes. Great. And um, I also have a YouTube channel that um, you can see um, some playthroughs of some Merkborg and um, Alicia's wonderful game, Paranormal Incorporated. <laughs> We've done some episodes of that. Um, more to come. And um, I, like I've also uh, run some of um, Alicia's other games like Raging Grannies and um, Allura, which is an amazing trophy dark incursion. So if you haven't already tried it, please do. <laughs> OK, um, so uh, that's me pretty much. I mean, like I just love role play game like uh, tabletop role playing games. And I am so appreciative that I get to fangirl it here with alicia sorry <laughs> <laughs> so thank you tony for no problem me. no thank you literally 23 minutes ago in our server i was like hey we have a, a no show for a game uh, anyone want to hop on and mads hopped on with us not knowing alicia i think was going to be on um but also not knowing anything about the game we were playing it was just like i'm free for the next couple of hours uh, i'll be here so super glad uh that, that it gets to be a double bonus uh morning for you in that regards uh, we use a couple tools here on stream to make sure we uh, stay uh, focused and that everybody is comfortable while we play. Those are lines, veils, and the X card because we're always playing uh, with different people. But we think normalizing safety tools at your table is uh, ideal regardless of whether you're playing with the same group or or a different group all the time. Um, we um, Lines are things that may happen in the world of our game but don't happen in the course of our play of it. They're off limits. Veils are things that may come up in play but we kind of handle with a light touch. Uh, fa uh, fast forward, fade to black, only addressed within a certain capacity. The X card is the ability to pause the game at any point in time because there's an issue um, that we need to address that could be confusion. It could be a, an, a topic we want to add to lines or veils. Nobody has to explain why they don't like it, just that it, it is something that they don't like. Then we'll remove it uh, from the game and move forward in a different direction. We also use an open door policy, which is basically just us expressing we're real people with real needs. If we need to get up, move away, talk to somebody else, um, do any of those things, we will because uh, that's healthy and you should do it also while you're watching if you need need to uh, take a break take care of yourself um, with that said we have a strong line against sexual violence and sexual coercion on stream uh, but we like to establish all the other lines and veils as we go so I'd love to hear any uh, lines or veils anyone else wants to add to our play I have a line against harm against pets and a veil on finger torture Okay, just fingers specifically cool cool Awesome. Uh, um, go I'll ahead. Just say for me, um, I, I'm not a fan of um, violence against children or anything along those lines. So, cool. Perfect. Awesome. Well, if more come up, we'll address them in play using the other tools we have at the table. Uh, but with that said, Giles, I'm going to hand things over to you to take us into Albert Omelette. All right. Um, well, as. Um, 
we discussed earlier, we have three um, erstwhile goblins, um, all of whom who have taken umbrage uh, against the Albert King and uh, the entrenched social hierarchy of uh, this monarchistic monster. And, um, you know, it's very much a let them eat cake sort of scenario with the, the Albert King regularly enjoying chowing down on Albert omelettes and uh, similar treats while your average workaday goblin has to make do with pasty gruel, never uh, a delight. So we have three disgruntled goblins here who uh, have decided for reasons, um, various reasons, and, and after um, a night discussing uh, the injustice of uh, the social inequality of goblin uh, realm, have decided to... Um, <laughs> assault the um, the palace of the Goblin King in search of owlbear eggs for their own omelette making purposes. Uh, if they can't tear down society itself, they'll at least uh, have a stab at um, e equalising uh, through cuisine. So um, can we, I know that um, Mads, uh, you were very tolerant of my disjointed run through of um, character creation uh, in the last uh, 15 minutes, um, but could we get a little bit of a an introduction to each of our characters or at least a name for each of our characters? Uh, yeah, my name is, uh, is Scrag Fleeburp um, and... Um... I'm a I'm a pretty I'm 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 not gonna lie I'm a pretty sharp uh, pretty sharp goblin not the not the biggest goblin in the heap uh, but you know um, and look I'm just gonna say this I don't know where these Fabergé eggs came from but I do need to get rid of them as quickly as possible um, and so um, that's uh, that's a lot about that's all you need to know about Scrag you know yeah okay so um, I am playing Harry. Except that I have no hair at all. No eyebrows, no ha hair on my head, nothing. Just completely hairless. Um, and, um, you know, Harry, Harry's not entirely sure how they got involved in this situation. Um, but they think that there's more happening than just the omelet. Um, you know, they feel really connected to these owl bears and maybe this injustice spreads further than just the worker, the worker goblins. Nice. And Mads? My goblin goes by the name of Glug. <laughs> and his, <laughs> I'm sorry, his uh, basic mission, um, secret or no, is basically some, one of the other goblins or something has stolen my finest pair of shoes and i am very very pissed off about it so if i meet glonk glonk must be destroyed well let's hope for glonk's sake that uh, that doesn't take place um thank you all very much uh, for that as i said you've decided to um to raid the goblin king's palace and we start in media res in the sense of, uh, or would we normally go through a little bit of a rules outline, Tony, or are we going to leap straight into it's However into you want it, however you want to do it. Yeah, we, we love people learning how to play the game. Uh, lots of times we just do that in the course of play, though. So we'll kind of jump in, and then as roles come up, we'll actually explain how the roles work. Yep, let's do that. Um, so we'll start the game in media res. The three of you obviously have um, come together with a shared, um, a shared passion, and that passion is to, just happens to be, to sneak into the Goblin King's palace in search of owlbear eggs. Um, in addition to that, each of you has your own agenda bubbling away beneath the surface, um, as we sort of touched on. Um, you're not quite sure how you managed to get in, but get in you did. Uh, might have been through a side entrance, uh, servant side entrance into the into the palace that was left unguarded or unwatched. Uh, but here you are; you find yourself uh, in a sort of an antechamber, few tables and uh, and other things lining lining the room, uh, and a large door leading to a wide corridor. Um, 
further down the corridor, you can hear a little bit of uh, a little bit of noise going on down the corridor um, as the the hustle and bustle of the uh, the palace is carrying on around you. You can hear some noises of goblins shouting and um, uh, and the sounds of uh, of busy feet and hands of of metal uh, banging on on metal and and other uh, similar noises coming from down the corridor. Now, what would you like to do? I mean, um, I I don't know about y'all. Um, I, I don't know if you know the old saying: when the metals a banging, there's owl bears nearby. <laughs> Have y'all heard that one? It's pretty common. Um, pretty common saying. Pretty common no. saying in Goblin Town. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, classic. I... Gra- Grandma used to say it all the time. I thought that meant that there was omelets being cooked because of the metal. I mean, that's what I thought, but you know. Well, yeah, just... but I mean, like you need you need owl bears to make the eggs to make the omelets. Okay, so we need to get these eggs then. Do you think that they cook? The omelets in front of the owl bears. <gasps> uh, that's disgusting. That would be an an injustice. It, I mean, it brings you know, it gives it that nice outrage flavor. That nom, 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 that edge of outrage that every omelet needs. You watch this. You seeing this, owl bear? <clears throat> oh. By the way, in case I hadn't mentioned it, if you see anybody that's named Glonk, he's mine. Yeah, yeah. He done stole some shoes I stole. Yeah, yeah. No, Glonk's mine. So you can hear the sound um, coming from a little further down the corridor of um, of of action and um, of movement. Um, and the door at the end of the corridor, which is is wide but not overly long, uh, swings open, and a number of um, worker goblins um, sort of pour out into the corridor, heading down towards you. What uh, is it, how would you like to approach this? As they as they're making their way down towards you, you can see they're busy at the moment. They're carrying various. Um, bags and and empty boxes and things like that making their way down down the corridor towards the location of the three of you um i'm just gonna i'm gonna hold the door behind us open for them uh just so they can easily pass by yep not a problem to press myself against the wall and try not to be seen it's completely but it's um, very obvious normal thing to do for a, a palace goblin worker um and mads what would what would glug be doing uh, glug would be looking at their shoes <laughs> can you roll me a d6 of course <laughs> <laughs> so according to this <clears throat> this secret goal every time you meet goblins who are not characters roll a d6 on a one or two one of them is glonk i rolled a two <laughs> well, um, we've got um, Harry, who is um, pressing themselves against the wall um, in an effort to become invisible. Um, we've got uh, Screg Fleeburp, who is holding the, the door behind you open and ushering the goblin workers through as if there was nothing more normal in all of the world. Um, and we've got Mads. Uh, or we've got, I should say, Glug, sorry, who uh, is suspiciously eyeing with a raised eyebrow the goblins' feet as they tramp on past. And and the three worker goblins um, are busy and, and they've got their own things to attend to. They sort of take note of your presence as they start to go past. Um, and with the door wide open and, um, you know, the, the ushering hand of Screg there, um, you know, encouraging them through. They think there's nothing more normal in all of the world than work walking out with uh, with all of this uh, rubbish to take out of the palace. Um, however, um, as the the three of them tramp 
past. Um, Glug, you just happen to notice that pair of boots on the third and final of the workers there looks mighty familiar. They look like a pair of very fine boots that you once owned, a very fine boots that you once stole, um, a very fine pair of boots that you believe still belongs to you. And as your uh, as your eyes pass from boot to ankle to knee to waist to uh, to face, you recognise there the distrustful and um, downright dastardly um, foe of yours, Glonk. Uh, there he stands, uh, not even not even the least bit ashamed. Um, that that he is wearing these obviously stolen boots of yours. Um, how how is Glug going to to cope with with this particular scenario? I mean, um, Glonk is is on his way at the moment past you and 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 heading towards the door. Um, what is Glug going to do in this scenario? I mean, literally the scene from Kill Bill where you hear the alarm and then the flash to the enemy and the flash back to the eyes of the bride and then back to the enemy and hearing that alarm sound going off. That is what's going on with Glug right now. <laughs> so I would like to trip, well, Glug, uh, Glug would like to trip Glonk and then whack him in the head with, I forget what I have. <laughs> Whatever you've got at hand is is perfectly fine. Um, okay, so you're going to trip Glug. Uh, you're gonna, Glug is going to trip over Glonk and um, and try and um, give him one over the over the back of the head as he's mm -hmm. fallen to the floor. Yep. Um, that's going to be a scrapping test. So yes. in Albert Omelette, our um, our goblins have four uh, skills. Those are scrapping, smarts, speed, and strength. Um, in fact, if um, if the situation had been a little bit different and, and Scrag hadn't been so accommodating with the door, I think Harry might have had to have rolled a, uh, a smarts test to look like, um, you know, do their best to look indiscreet as they press themselves against the wall and, and attempt to hide. But with everything as it was, the, the, the worker goblins were happy to pass on through. Uh, up until the point, Glug steps forward, uh, eyes ablaze, and kicks uh, poor Glonk's feet, uh, or maybe not so poor Glonk's feet, out from under oh, him. Oh, nothing! He stole those shoes I rightfully stole myself! <laughs> Beautiful. So um, Glonk, uh, occupied as he is, has a scrapping skill of one. And since this is a scrapping test and it's a it's a head-to-head -head test, um, you are going to roll your scrapping dice and you are going to roll, um, in addition to that, uh, different coloured uh, dice uh, equal to the difficulty. And the difficulty in this particular case is Glonk's scrapping skill. Uh, Glonk is um, otherwise occupied and unsuspecting of what is about to take place um, in his little world. And so his scrapping skill level is one. So if you could add one difficulty dice uh, to your scrapping, and then roll those dice up. Um, now, am I rolling the number of die of of my scrapping? Yes. So my scrapping is four. So you roll four skill dice and one difficulty dice. Great. One sec. All right. So for my scrapping dice, I got a six, five, one, one, and then. His scrapping die is five. Okay, so normally in a in a skill test, in any sort of skill test, whether it's a head to head test or otherwise, any difficulty dice and skill dice they cancel each other out if they're the same. So if I've rolled a five on the difficulty dice as you have, we take out the five and we take out one five from the skill dice. If you'd rolled a couple of fives, they just cancel each other out one on one. So if you'd got one five, it would cancel out one five from your skill dice. Right. So the, the difficulty dice cancels your five that you rolled on the difficulty dice cancels out the five that you rolled um, in your scrapping dice. The highest remaining dice in the pool is the six that you rolled. Mm -hmm. Um, the highest remaining dice is a skill dice. Therefore, um, Glug uh, has been successful. Glug has kicked the feet out from uh, Glonk. Um, Glonk has uh, stumbled uh, heavily into the floor. 
um, crying out in shock and pain as um, as his feet are taken out from under him, and he and he hits the um, the cobbled floor of the of the entryway into the the palace. Uh, the two other goblins, I might add, there, Scrag and Harry, turn around with a look of shock and surprise on their faces, and before they uh, get to do anything, you might like to choose to act. What would Scrag like to do? Um, have any of them passed through the door yet? Uh, one is in the doorway. Uh, one is a few steps behind them. And, um, Glug in the rear, um, is currently sprawled on the floor, uh, mightily. Yeah. I'm just going to, I'm just going to kick the one who's part of the way through the door, like, uh, in the butt in order to push him the rest of the way through the door so I can close oh, it. Kicking him out the door? Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, well, this is similarly going to be a scrapping test. Um, and again, the state of shock uh, it means that you are rolling against a difficulty of one. Um, so roll your scrapping dice with a difficulty of one added to that pool. All right. Do, do, do. And... Um, I, uh, I took my dice bag to my office and have not brought it home yet. Uh, and every single time I have to roll a whole lot of dice, I'm like, this sucks because all of my except like tons of dice that I have are away. I only have one set of polyhedrals at home. However, I did roll a four to their three. And so. Yep. Um, the highest dice is a skill die. Yep. You are uh, successful. You plant your boot, your, your boot, I should say, firmly in their backside um, and with a look of, um, of profound shock on their face, they're propelled through the door and out of the palace um, a couple of steps, and, um, and then uh, they start to stumble down a flight of stairs uh, leading out of the, 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 the um, servant's entrance into the, the palace, the very one that you have just snuck in through. Um, Harry, what are you, what are you doing in this, in this scenario? So, um, I have sort of like Scrig's words ringing in my ear that the metal sound means they're making omelets. And now I'm very concerned that there might be owl bears there. So mm -hmm. I'm going to take this opportunity to flee down the hallway whence those gobos came from to see what's happening down there. Not a problem. It's a good um, choice. You... <laughs> we're, we're five minutes in and we're splitting the party. This is, this is... <laughs> This is this is fantastic. No, I'm joking. Oh, uh, absolutely. Um, so Harry is um, is herring down the corridor, um, flinging the door at the end of this short but wide corridor open, um, and you find yourself confronted with a scullery. Um, so there's large uh, benches lining the walls. There are two doors in the scullery. Um, there's a number of other uh, worker goblins in here, uh, dressed in um, in um, clothes befitting uh, the preparers of food. Um, there are a number of pots on the boil. There's um, large containers of uh, fruit and vegetables and meats, and uh, there may well even be some eggs in here. Um, and I might get you to roll a d6 if you could. Six. Oh, there are three eggs in a large basket sitting on the far side of the room. Um, however, in between uh, that basket of eggs and yourself, uh, there is the scullery laid out. It's a, a kitchen uh, where things are being prepared and there are in there three goblins, um, a chef, a sous chef and another worker who is um, busy um, helping prepare uh, some some of the foodstuffs that will be um, obviously sent through the palace. Um, what uh, I'm going to skip back now to um, Glug. Glug, you you've kicked out um, the feet of Glonk. Glonk's landed heavily on the floor, and your scrapping roll was significant. So, when it comes to inflicting hurts, and we're scrapping. Um, the number of, of hurts or injuries or wounds that are inflicted is equal to the number of dice left in the pool. So you rolled um, uh, you rolled five dice, so four of your scrapping dice, one difficulty dice. Uh, the difficulty dice cancelled out one of the scrapping dice, so there are three dice left in the pool, if I'm correct, if I'm doing maths correctly. <laughs> and so you would be inflicting three hurts on Glonk. 
Um, Glonk has hit the ground hard. Um, you leap forward to deliver a, uh, a stunning blow to the back of your head, but you the back of his head, but you realise that he is out cold, sprawled on the floor, uh, one arm up here, one arm out here like this, uh, face to the side, eyes rolled back in his head. Um, he is out for the count. Um, and what is uh, what is Glug going to be doing at this particular juncture? If there are more. <clears throat> if the other two goblins hadn't quite gotten out the door and then now Scraggs is uh, engaged, then I will snatch the shoes. So just to be clear, <laughs> um, we've got Scragg has kicked one out the door. Okay. Um, uh, Harry has bolted bolted away down the corridor, flinging open a, a door to the kitchen. You, you're not quite sure what's happening down that way, but there is one other goblin in the room right. um, who has that profound look of of shock on their face, and they will get to act in this in this round. Okay, um, if nothing else um, intervenes. Um, yeah. So if there's no time to to get the shoes before this guy reacts, then I'm going to react on that guy first. <laughs> yep. Awesome. And and what are you going to do? Are you going to attempt to mollify him, um, drag him to the ground, um, kick his feet out from under him? Um, what's what's the play here for, for Glug? Oh, yeah. Glug doesn't care. It's like, yeah, I guess, I guess you're going to the floor too. So, <laughs> um, yeah. A hard day at work for these guys. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so I know what my what I'm rolling. Um, how yep. much am I rolling for for this for this dude? <laughs> uh, there, you the difficulty is going to be one. Oh, okay. All right. So that they rolled a two, and I rolled a six, three, five, and four. So there was no cancelling out. Um, how, how are you dealing with this particular goblin? You're kicking them as well? Are you, <laughs> you're leaping up and delivering a blow? Are you? Uh, basically it's, uh, where Glug had tripped Glonk and then whacked him in the back of the head. Then that swing is just going to take the other guy out, like into the, like up from, from below and then up to to knock them out that way knock their knock them on their jaw so. nice so um glug swept the feet out from underneath glonk glonk sprawling on the floor now unconscious uh glug then um takes that mighty leap up delivers an an uppercut to this poor unsuspecting palace worker um catching it catching him in the bottom of the jaw um, it's a classic comic book strike. I mean, you have you have rolled a significant amount of um, of successes there, um, and all the dice are still in the pool. Um, you're also no mean fighter, so you know you're rolling four dice. Uh, you know what you're doing. Um, the blow catches them on the jaw. Um, in in classic comic book style, their feet are lifted off the ground. Um, and the body of, um, of this uh, goblin, unconscious, uh, seconds after the blow lands, sails backwards through the door, past Greg's. Um, the other goblin, whose one hand is clutching his uh, sore backside and turning around at the top of the steps in outrage, uh, it's Greg is caught by this sailing goblin coming back through the door, uh, and both of them tumble down the stairs in a in a mess um, of flailing limbs and um, uh, of unconscious uh, goblins uh, down those steps and out of the palace. A distant, so, the, a distant voiceover goes. K.O. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The goblin's standing there <laughs> at the end. Um, very good. All right. So, Screg, um, your uh, turn. What What is Screg going to be doing uh, aside I'm, from watching this goblin sail? I'm going to empty like one of the bags that 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 uh, that Glonk dropped uh, on the ground, and then start. <laughs> start pulling it down over his head so his feet are still left exposed but he is wrapped up in the bag okay concealing him concealing him from um doing your best to conceal him yeah 
Okay, can I get a? It's a concealing test. Let's get a. Let's get a smarts. The difficulty here is going to be, um, I think, three. Like it, it's not easy to conceal an entire worker goblin in a sack. Um, That's fine. But, I, I did min max uh, scrag, scrag for uh, for smarts. So I'm, I'm <laughs> well, we've got a difficulty of three, so all right. roll away. And and all we want to know, I guess, in the end is. Um, once you've rolled the skill dice and the difficulty dice, what two, type of dice? Two sixes is the cancel remaining? out, uh, a three cancels out, and I am left with a five. So their entire roll got canceled out. Um, nice. So you've got the, the leftover dice as a skill dice? Uh, leftover dice is a skill dice, yeah. Boom. All right. Well, um, it might be difficult, but uh, for a man of your intellect, this is no. Uh, this is no no difficulty at all you you managed to tuck him away inside this sack um only the feet are exposed uh which obviously glug is going to appreciate uh booted feet uh probably soon to be unbooted feet um and you've managed to to make this look very much like a uh, pile of uh, a hessian stashed in a corner of the room uh, with only the the exposed boots there, easy enough to tuck away or w throw a little bit of hessian over to uh, to con confound uh, even the most eagle-eyed of goblins that might be walking through. It just, it just it just looks like somebody left the trash by the back door instead of taking it all the way out. It's super frustrating. Very lazy, very lazy. Um, the Goblin King will tell you his workers are very much like that. Um, all right, so let's go back to Harry. Harry, you've flung the door of the kitchen open. We've got uh, in there, we've got three um, workers who you sort of hadn't had much of a chance to sort of take in what was going on. There's obviously some food preparation going on. Um, you know, the, the scullery is there. There's food around the place. There's cooking happening. Um, you, as you sort of stop to take stock of what's happening, you can you can see that um, in addition to the, the food preparation that's going on, there's also, uh, it looks like the, the chef and the sous chef are engaged in some sort of drinking game um, while they are preparing the, the food. It's always a good sign for, um, you know, safe food preparation techniques. Um, what is it that, that you think that, um, that Glug is going to be doing at this juncture? That Glug is going to be doing? Oh, sorry, that Harry's going to be doing. Oh, um, I think, um, is there like, maybe like a stock pot or something nearby that I can grab? I would like to act yep. like I totally belong here. Nice. Okay, so you're going to grab a stock pot. You're going to look like you're trying to blend in in this kitchen. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, absolutely, there is. Uh, trying to pass yourself off as a as a member of the kitchen staff here, looking au natural, the, grabbing the stock pot and um, pop, popping a finger in, tasting it, um, looking like you know what you're doing, is going to be a smarts test. Um, we've got three goblins here who uh, commonly work in the kitchens, and so um, I think that you know they're they're pretty cluey about who normally works in the kitchens and and what a kitchen worker might be might look like if they were legitimate. Um, but they are also occupied with a drinking game, so we're gonna we're gonna reduce the difficulty from three to two. So a difficulty of two is what you're gonna roll against. Okay. Well, we have our first abject failure of the game because um, I rolled two fives on the difficulty and I did not roll above that on my Ah, marks very nice. Okay, so you um, you step into the room, you go to pick up a stock pot um, to look like you blend in. Um, in all perfectly natural and, and would have worked perfectly had um, Harry remembered that, that heat... Um, you know, moves through induction and and a stock pot. You know, usually when you pick up a stock pot, if it's been on the boil for some time, you would usually use some sort of uh, cloth or um, oven mitt or something to help pick it up. The handles are likely to be hot. And uh, Harry discovers that this is, uh, in fact, very, very true. All of this learning comes rushing back uh, in a searing moment of uh, of realization of epiphany. 
uh, as you pick up the stock pot and you go to make some comment about needs more pepper and um, all that happens to come out of your mouth is a loud uh, piercing squeal as the the heat of the handles um, makes itself apparent to you. Um, you, you, you give out this piercing uh, squeal, uh, drop the sc- stock pot on the floor with a very loud clang. Um, no, no more um, louder announcement could you make to your arrival into the kitchen and no more clearer could you have made it that this is not a place you belong. Um, the three goblins in the room wheel around uh, and take you in, one with a with a shot glass partway to their, to their mouth, um, and the, the chef um, rounds uh, on you and, and barks out, um, Who are you? You know what? I'm just going to lean into my story anyway and then oh i'm 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 new (laughs) first first day first day um not a problem um the chef looks at you in in disbelief um He's and um, turns to the sous chef. Um, I'm in charge of hiring and firing. You you put them on. And the sous chef looks at the the chef in uh, in disbelief. Shot glass still part way to the lips, and shakes their head furiously. Um, Ain't never seen them. Um, they they mutter and return. Um, what would you What would you like to do at that juncture? Oh. I'm sorry. The king is my cousin. He got me the job. All right. This is convincing. Um, uh, member of the aristocracy coming into the kitchen, not knowing their way around, burning themselves on an oven pot, um, foolishly dropping things and then uh, revealing that they got the job through nepotism alone. Seems seems perfectly legitimate excuse here. Um, the chef um, rolls their eyes uh, as if to say, this. well, this isn't the first time this has happened. Um, and um, says, says, we'll pick that pot up. Use a cloth this time. <laughs> Very slowly, just like reaching for a cloth. Starting to like pick up the pot. It's real slow. All right, excellent. All right, Glug and uh, Scrag in the meantime, back in the other room. Um Screg, you've you've held the door open. You you've managed to conceal this this worker goblin um, glonk uh, underneath a pile of hessian. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. You've heard a little way down the um, that corridor uh, that you were looking down earlier, um, the the direction that Harry um, had bolted. A loud screaming sound and the clang of something heavy. Um, metal hitting the ground um, and some shouting. Um, what what would you like to do presented with with that particular scenario? Oh, um, after like I'm gonna close the door if if there is an internal lock on it, we're gonna lock it. <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of slowly make my way down towards where uh, where Harry went. Are you sort of keeping your eyes open? Are you trying to take in what's happening here? Yeah, you, absolutely. Sort of like, bursting uh, into the room. Yeah. Yeah, Scrag right. is very canny. Very canny. Can I get then a, a smarts test with a difficulty of two, please? Absolutely. Absolutely. I love a, I love a smarts test. <laughs> uh, as soon as I remember where I put my smarts dice. Where are you, smarts dice? Get everything all set up. There we go. All right. Against the difficulty two, you said. Uh, uh, the highest dice is a success die, is a skill dice, uh, and it's a five. 
Awesome. Um, all right, you you make your way uh, cautiously down the corridor, and you can hear uh, the exchange um, between Harry and uh, the chefs there. Um, you're well aware of the cover story uh, that Harry has um, has delivered, and uh, you're also cognizant of the fact that the chef and the the sous chef and the other goblin have swallowed it uh, swallowed it whole. Um, action and word working in unison there to create a convincing cover story, despite whatever else might be going on. Um, you, you, so, so you make your way a little further down. You, you take in the scene of the the, the scullery, of the the benches, the food. What also catches your eye on the far side of the room is a large wicker basket, um, in which uh, is sitting three large and obviously owl bear eggs excellent excellent um i am uh uh how many people are in the kitchen is it just the two of them or are there other are there other folks making their there's, way around there's three um three goblins there's the uh, there's four goblins i should say there's the the chef the sous chef and a worker um and then in addition to that of course there is harry uh, our newly anointed cousin to the king. Um, I um, <laughs> try to make eye contact with Harry through the door, and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm going to stand up from my slow cleaning and say, oh, good. <laughs> my royal assistant has arrived. He will take the eggs now. Ooh. Okay. Um, and uh, Scrag, how are you responding to this? this uh, yes, I, the royal <laughs> assistant to the king's cousin, uh, well known in far parts of the land, but maybe you haven't heard of me uh, because... We're from down south is here. We've moved in and now I will be taking the eggs. Uh, you know what? I'll take I'll take these eggs, but I'll bring you I'll, I'll drop off one of the uh, one of the southern delicacy eggs also too, uh, for y'all to be able to try out. Not a problem. Can I get then a smarts test, please? And we're going to have a difficulty of um, of I uh, let's go with. Let's go with the difficulty of three because um, the chef is obviously, you know, uncertain here and you are new and this backstory is becoming more and more complicated. Um, not, not that I not that I additionally complicated it all by adding, <laughs> adding extra details. Uh, six and six cancel out. Uh, I've got a second six and they do not, so highest dice is a six. Very nice. All right. Well, uh, it's a convincing story, and the the chef um, does a little ooh, down south. You say I've heard good things of the eggs of down south. Yeah. Look at uh, look at me. look at the jeweling on the outside of this thing as I pull out a large Fabergé egg and and st stick it like where the other others. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you don't. You know, it, it it's not it's not comfortable for the owl bears, but if you feed them uh, a large amount of uh, of gems and diamonds, uh, these things just pop out. Very common in the South uh, technique. The 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 chef um, is is nodding, and you can see the sous chef turns and says, "It's, it's that, that's unbelievable. I I can't imagine that would be comfortable for the owl bear." And the chef, of course, who 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 knows things, turns around and cuffs him over the shoulder and says, um, "Haven't you heard of this? A very common practice down south." Um, and uh, yeah, we call it bedazzling. <laughs> egg, egg dazzling. The um, the chef um, uh, then turns and says, "Well, and, and how does one prepare and eat uh, the, the jeweled eggs down south? Well, I know how we do them here in the north. But, oh, uh, I, I do it very well. But I mean, if you want to do it a different way, like that's that's up to you. Uh, I don't. I mean, like 
You know, I'm 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 merely the royal cousin's assistant. I wouldn't I wouldn't deign to tell uh, the head chef. Um, and when I say this, I'll, I'll point to the sous chef uh, how to how to prepare uh, these delicious eggs. The sous chef um, looks um, delighted to have been mistaken for the head chef, uh, and the head chef, however, uh, has a, a look of um, of fury crosses his face as the suggestion that he is anything less than. Uh, the the king in his domain here in the kitchen um, rounds on the sous chef um, handily um, and says, um, oh, getting ideas above your station, are you? And um, goes to cuff him over over the ear. And I might get you to to roll me some, some dice here. I might get... Um, I might go with a uh, let's go with a strength test, and I'll, I'll get you to roll on behalf of the chef here. And we're going to go with um, three dice versus two, if we could. So, could one of you roll a test with three skill dice and then two difficulty dice? Uh, I can. Uh, Alicia, do you want to do the two difficulty dice, and I'll do the three skill dice? <laughs> sure, I'll do the two that. difficulty <laughs> dice. They betrayed me last time, so you know. Uh, I got I got a five, a two, and a two. I got a four and a one. Okay, so no cross out, but the skill dice is the higher dice. Nice. So the chef goes to to clip the sous chef over the ear and remind him exactly uh, who is boss in this particular room. Uh, and the sous chef goes to duck um, unsuccessfully, I might add. Um, and the, the the hand of the chef uh, cuffs him over over the ear. Um, the the, the sous chef stumbles sideways, dangerously uh, close to the, the wicker basket of, um, of owlbear eggs there, um, Screg. Um, um, before we jump into what you might do, I'm going to jump back to Glug. And Glug, you are in the entryway. Um, Screg has, um, has managed to conceal almost wholly the body of Glonk. And a little bit uh, Wizard of Oz like, there are just sticking out of the ends of the the Hessian, um, two beautiful boots. Oh, I mean, Glug is totally going to be grabbing those boots for sure. <laughs> um, but knowing that there's probably going to be some more scrapping ahead, it's. Glug is going to take the time to stow them away so this way they can stay nice and, and bright and whatever, shiny, and then kick the bag in the head or, you know, like on the bottom, which is the head, and then uh, proceed to casually go down the hallway to join the others in the kitchen, but waiting outside to listen to to the exchange. <laughs> Not a problem. Well, you've heard uh, some, some shouting and some carry on. You've stowed these shoes after giving them... Uh, a good oogling or ogling. Um, you've managed to to get one of the little sacks and, and um, deposit the these nice boots in that sack um, after giving them a bit of a dust off. Glonk wasn't the most careful of owners um, and well deserved that extra kick. Um, then you've popped the the boots into the bag and, and made your way down towards the the scullery where you've where you've overheard the. Um, the um the events unfolding uh, as described previously um harry you've just watched um scrig um st stroll in and take uh, control of the narrative uh in the room um you've also noticed him throwing a few uh bombs into the conversation there which has resulted in uh some dissatisfaction between the chef and the sous chef and now the sous chef is uh, stumbling um, wholeheartedly towards the, the wicker basket of owlbear eggs uh, in the corner there. Uh, it looks very much like uh, there, there could be an egg-related accident about to take place. An accident, um, what would you What would you like to, to do to intervene? Um, I would like to. throw something at the sous chef in the hopes that it will knock him off his stumbling course. 
<laughs> yep, not a problem. Well, I'm just gonna, just to grab like I feel like a like a like a rolling pin or something that's nearby. And a I'm large bang shot it on the pot, table. perhaps. A large shot pot. Yes, I'm gonna bang it on the table and be like, "I'll show you how we prepare the eggs down south." Sorry, I speak more slowly than that. I'll show you how we prepare the eggs down south, and then I'm just gonna fling the pot at the sous chef. Very good. All right, let's go with a um, a scrapping test, uh, and it's going to be against the speed of our um, stumbling sous chef uh, and a speed of two. So uh, difficulty of two there. Um, as you fling the stock pot at the sous chef, uh, who happens to be also nearby the basket of eggs. Oh my gosh, I cannot roll for shit. But they rolled two twos. I rolled three twos. Thus oh, well. Out two of those twos, <laughs> and leaving me with Yahtzee. two and a one. So. <laughs> the end result is all that counts. So the, the leftover dice in the pool is a skill die. That means it's a success. Um, you've, you've, you've bellowed in your, um, paste, uh, rhythm that, that this is how we prepare these eggs down South and then have hoofed the, um, the large, um, stock pot that you had previously dropped and had been instructed to pick up, uh, still in the process of, of obviously placing back on the counter. You've decided against, uh, against all better judgment, not to place it back. And in fact, as to use it as a ranged weapon. You've hurled it mightily at the sous chef who was stumbling towards the eggs. Uh, the stock pot catches the sous chef um, in the chest, and you can see he, he uh, is, oof, who's the stock pot hits him. His arms go out uh, in front of him, legs go out underneath him, and he sails back into the wall um, behind him. Uh, now there's two doors in this room, um, and he's just hit one of those doors. Uh, heavily bang into that door um, and uh, has broken that door uh, open and he's stumbled back into a corridor behind him. Can I get you to roll a d6 to work out what sort of uh, corridor that might be? It's a six. A six. Uh, very good. So it's a large corridor. So quite uh, a vaulted uh, corridor, leading obviously somewhere important. Uh, wide corridor. However, there's also, you rolled a six, so there's also something in that corridor. Can I get you to roll us a, 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 another D6 for that encounter, please? Three. There are some goblins. And, and another D6, if I may? Just leaning heavily three into... Three again. Three again. Uh, some worker goblins, three worker goblins uh, making their way down uh, the corridor and they're carrying between them, two of them are carrying between them, one at the front, one at the back, what looks like a stretcher. Um, and on that stretcher is a large um, ornately decorated uh, bed table. Uh, the sort of thing one might serve to a, a person of royalty or a person uh, of means. Um, and neatly arrayed on that is an empty plate. They are making their way to the scullery. Uh, a knife, fork and uh, an empty cup. Uh, looks like they're coming potentially to, to get something from the kitchen and then to take it elsewhere. Um, so they're coming down the corridor um, and as they, they're sort of making their way down the corridor, they're carrying this, uh, the stretcher behind one behind them, one, you know, in front, um, the door in front of them has burst open and through that door has, has flown a sous chef and large, uh, crock pot, um, <laughs> and both, uh, crashed loudly onto the corridor, uh, in front of them. Um, this is obviously stunned and, and shocked uh, the, um, the, 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 these workers as they're approaching. Uh, we're going to jump back uh, quickly. Scrig, you, uh, you've, you've obviously uh, not accidentally incited some um, trouble between the chef and the sous chef, uh, which has resulted in a cuff over the year. The sous chef stumbling has then taken a crock pot to the chest and stumbled through the door. Uh, what would you like to do in, at this particular juncture? You've got your Fabergé egg in one hand, 
uh, or your your southern delicacy in one hand, um, the the basket of three uh, actual owlbear eggs uh, to your other side. Uh, a stumbling sous chef has has flown past you um, with crock pot. And um, further over in that direction, you can see um, more of these uh, worker goblins making their way down the corridor towards you. Yeah, I am. Uh, Scrag's going to uh, just very quickly move over and uh, move these, uh, mo- remove the remove the eggs from the wicker basket into my my satchel uh, and and pop that Fabergé uh, southern egg in the uh, into the basket. Nice. So you you pop that um, the Fabergé egg into the basket. And you're remembering where it is, just in case you can come back later when the heat dies down for um, the yeah. hunter for whoever has managed to steal all the Fabergé eggs from the king's Fabergé egg collection. Uh, not that that was whoever you, that obviously. might be. It's just happened to it happened to have been uh, in your possession. Uh, no, no, it's just just a just random coincidence. Um, but you don't want to get caught with them, obviously. So we'll stash them here in the scullery. You've you've managed to take the owlbear eggs, the three owlbear eggs, two into the satchel. Uh, you'll be carrying uh, one of them. Um, can I get you to mark on your extraction box on your character sheet three tally marks? Um, you have you are carrying three eggs, so three tally marks uh, there. And from this point on, any time you are carrying an egg or eggs and you are making any sort of roll, you're going to roll one dice of a different colour for each of those eggs. Now, those are the extraction dice. Uh, If those dice come up as a one or a six, then something is going to be happening. Uh, It's not easy um, you know, bustling around the place while you're uh, juggling eggs. Um, so uh, to, to simulate that, we've got our extraction dice that you'll be rolling uh, in amongst any other pool of dice that you roll. We, we may spread some of these eggs around in a minute, <laughs> but for right now, that's totally fine. Um, all right, so you're, you're sequestering the eggs. You've got all of those sorted now. Uh, the, ki- the kitchen is sort of erupting into a I- I- into chaos. The chef looks mightily pleased at, at Harry's contribution here uh, to the fate of the sous chef. Uh, Glug, you're waiting outside. What you're hearing in the scullery, what you're seeing through that open door, is the the unfolding chaos of um, of general mayhem. Um, what what you what would you like to do? I mean, Glug is very pleased with himself because he's got the boots, yay. But he does stride into the kitchen, like kind of like, you know, with the club thing that he has and just kind of looks around. Like, oh, okay. And then just kind of looks over to 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 Harry and Scraggs and says, anybody to beat up? <laughs> you know, and just grins. Um, we look over at the one worker standing there. What's he doing? Uh, he was in the process of getting a large ladle, um, which he was going to be stirring, uh, obviously stirring. It's what you do with the ladle. And, um, however, he's dropped everything he was holding, uh, and his mouth is also dropped open as he has watched, uh, this unfold, um he he looks stunned and shocked uh the sous chef the, the chef sorry is is almost doing a jig and delight as he's seen the sous chef um thrown through the door um and uh yeah the other worker in there uh is just looking agog at the scene uh unfolding um, meanwhile, the three goblins approaching down the corridor uh looking confused uh and confounded. Um, they're here to pick up breakfast uh, for someone important, and um, all of this chaos is not going to be helping uh, their their um, their goals. Uh, you see, the one in the lead um, turns around, uh, turns his head around, uh, and yells back over um, their shoulder to the goblin at the rear: um, "Fight in the kitchen! Go get the guards!" <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I think I'm going to announce slowly and loudly. The king's cousin and their royal entourage will take their leave now. And then, like, go back out, sort of running into Glug, I feel like, to exit back out the way we came. Away from the workers and the stockpot situation. Not a problem. <laughs> and, um, Scrag? Um, yeah, I think, you know, as the king's cousin commands, so I do. <laughs> Glug will also kind of look around and go... As the king's cousin commands, so I do. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. All right. So Glug is uh, standing in the doorway as um, as Harry is is trying to bolt past them. Um, and Scrag, you are you're on the far side of the kitchen. Um, there's the two goblins in the corridor have sort of put down the the. Um, um, thing that they were carrying, um, that the um, stretcher that they were carrying with the with the bed um, tray on it. Um, and you can see they, they, st they started to sort of make their way uh, speedily towards the door. The goblin at the rear, the third goblin, has run back down the corridor um, and you can hear him uh, yelling, guards, guards. Um, in the meantime, um, the, the chef is, uh, you know, dancing a bit of a jig at the side of the sous chef, having taken a beating after getting ideas above his station. And the other worker in the room is just looking on, uh, stunned. Um, to get your way across the room, I, I'm going to take a, a speed test, I think. There's, there's, a, there's a bit of chaos going on. There's stock all over the floor. Uh, for a start, there is uh, ladles having been dropped, other things going on, lots of chaos. Uh, goblins uh, descending on you from uh, behind. Um, so I think a bit of a speed test is in order. Can Glug um, help in any way? Can like there can there be like a help roll, like kind of Glug covers Scraggs to be able to get out? Yeah, like, absolutely. In front of him? Yeah. How do, how do you think the, the um, Glug might try and help in this scenario? I think, <laughs> I think, you know, seeing that, that Scriggs is across the room, it's like, you know, he's going to be like waving them forward and then moving forward himself to just kind of get ready to tee off. Like, so he's got the thing at his shoulder and then he's just going to wail on anybody <laughs> that tries to approach Scriggs to, to help, I guess, like, you know, um, uh, watches six, basically. Yep. You know? So some of the, I guess some of the pressure in the, the scenario is from the thought of uh, goblins descending from behind. Right. Um, maybe with a bit of uh, a sort of an intimidating glare down that corridor and a, and a menacing wave of a club, uh, you might be able to hold them off a little bit yep. um, and um, give Scrag a little bit of um, a little bit of respite uh, there. Um, and, and also as you, as you move forward, you know, put a steadying hand out as Scred comes past. So you can absolutely help. Uh, helping will allow you to add half your dice from a particular pool um, so that um, when Scred makes their roll, they can add half your dice to their mm -hmm. skill dice. Okay. Um, so in this particular case, Scred's going to be making a speed test against a difficulty of three, and they can add um, half your... Uh, we'll go speed as well um, to that um, to that roll. Rounding My up. speed's two. Sorry, man. That's fine. <laughs> so that's one extra that's dice. An, that's an extra dice. Yeah. So we're going to have your dice pool of skill dice. Um, that's your speed plus the one um, from Glug. Uh, we're going to have three difficulty dice, and we're going to have three extraction dice. Okay. So... Uh, we got five on the skill dice as the highest. Um, we've got extraction dice, uh, fives and threes. So everything's in the middle. Excellent. So if you'd have rolled a one, um, there would have been some sort of complication, um, to what is taking place in, in here. Uh, had you rolled a six, there is a table called the Oh No table. 
uh, and we would roll on that to see what happens. Maybe mm -hmm. one of the eggs hatches uh, and a furious baby owlbear comes out. Maybe you crack an egg and um, your sense of self-esteem takes a hit. Uh, or uh, there are other things that can happen on that table. But none of that is going to be happening right now. You charge across the the, the room, um, deftly aided by Glug, uh, who is waving a menacing club at the, the goblins um, in the rear, and um, you make your way across the kitchen um, in in short order and out through that door back um, into the corridor uh, with Harry and um, with a glug sort of walking backwards, looking with a, a menacing eye, an evil eye at uh, anyone who might even consider following. Um, what the three of you sort of regroup in the corridor? What what are, what are we what are we going to be doing from here? Uh, hey, I got some of these, and I, I show you all the eggs. <laughs> That's cool. Look at that. Wait a second. Yours is, yours looks better than, than these. Why, why, why are we getting these again? These are tastier. Oh, oh yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Here, if Go you on. want, if you want one of the other ones, like I'll, I'll get no, you. No, 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 no. How Dude. many? How many? Just out of curiosity, how many of the Fabergé eggs do you have? Five. I have, to, I have five. I have oh. to get rid of. Right, five of them. You've managed to sequester one. Yeah. <laughs> you know no, what? You, that's why I was trying to give one to someone. You know what else. you should do, though? You should, add, like, you know, if we're trying to make an escape, you should just, like, start start dropping them in the hallway. <laughs> well, part of it is I have to I have to put them in unsuspected suspecting oh. places, and so that is the challenge. And yeah, so, like, should... putting them in that whisker basket where there were other eggs. Is, oh, is gotcha, way. gotcha. Giving Damn, them to another it. goblin who thinks it's an it's, it's another egg. It's a, it's another idea too. But. Okay. Well, you should have left a present for Glonk you know, in the bag. <laughs> so you've been offered you've been offered a, a Fabergé egg or a jeweled, beautiful looking jeweled egg. Southern, southern um, egg. Yeah. Glug. Um, is it something that Glug's likely to take? Not really. It's like you know, like I think Glug's now hungry, so I was like, "Yeah, sure, I'll take one of the regular." Yeah, I'll, like, get, I'll hand eggs. I'll hand a regular egg to anyone who wants one, and a Fabergé egg to anyone okay. who wants one. All right. Well, you can reduce your extraction um, tally down to how many eggs you're keeping, and and everybody else raise their extraction tally to um, whatever. So, so I'm guessing one each. One each. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you've regrouped in the corridor. You've distributed the eggs. Uh, all of that takes time, and without um, without Glug's menacing eye sort of warding off the the goblins uh, further down, you can see the two workers uh, have made their way into the kitchen and are sort of taking in the sight of a uh, of a scullery in uh, in a state of of significant destruction uh, and uh, mess. Um, the 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 chef. Um, still looking smug, um, is, is watching them enter and, and, um, pointing to the, the, um, the cooking, um, the, the, where he's been cooking, obviously, um, and saying, ready in a minute, um, to the, the workers as they've come in. However, as I said, the goblin, the third goblin in the rear um, was charging back down the corridor to get some um, some guards and you can hear um, in that corridor further away you can't see but you can hear the clank, uh, clank, clank, clank of, um, of some people approaching swiftly. Uh, sounds potentially like they are armoured. Um, what are the three of you likely to be doing at this particular juncture? Is can we go further down this corridor, or is this? It was only the scullery. Um, so down this particular corridor was the scullery. There's another door in the room that you were um, that you were originally in. If you'd like to continue on, that sounds good. Um, <laughs> yep, not a problem. All right, yeah, so you make your way. Yeah, the one we pushed the thingies through. That's what I was thinking, right? You pushed that one goblin like. I think that was out. That was I, I sent them. Yeah, out. there's 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 oh. one door going out. There was an open corridor okay. going down, which is the one you went th down, and then and there's um, a closed another. door inside also. Yep. Okay. So you can go back down, um, make your way quickly back down 
um, to the entryway and open up that door. Can I get a D6 roll from one of you? Thank you, Mads. Six. All right. Um, opening this corridor, again, opening this door, uh, opens up onto a large, <coughs> excuse me, another large uh, vaulted corridor. And um, inside this corridor, there is, because again, you roll a six, an encounter. Can I get a D6 from one of you as well? Leisha, yeah. perhaps. Five. Ah, brilliant. Um, you fling this door open, and um, in this particular corridor are some heroes, uh, very much out of place in the Goblin King's Palace. But can I get a D6 roll to see what sorts of heroes these are? I got it. Three. Uh, we've got ourselves a uh, two paladins and a wizard uh, making their way down our, our in, in this particular corridor. It uh, looks like they were making their way further into the palace. However, you've flung the door open, the three of you, uh, and all three of them, the pl two platins in the lead, of course. The wizard would never be in the lead. Um, and the wizard at the rear. And all three, as you fling the door open and go to step through, uh, turn around to face you. Can I get a D6, please, Mads? Six again. <laughs> All right, so the heroes, for every encounter, there are a number of tables that we can roll uh, roll on. Um, obviously, we roll for an encounter. We roll, you can, again, you can. You could you could create your own your own palace or, or dungeon or whatever else, but there's a set of tables that you can roll on also, and that's what we've been rolling on for our encounters. We've rolled uh, that we've encountered some heroes, and then we can roll to see what they are up to, what it is they're after. Uh, so these particular heroes, our two paladins and our wizard, are here looking for an easy source of XP to grind. And so as they turn around and take you in, um, the two paladins were in the lead, making their way into the Goblin King's palace uh, with the wizard in the rear, uh, the wizard being closest to you and the paladins further away. All three turn around uh, and take you in with a look of abject delight on their face. Uh, look what's fallen into their lap, uh, their faces seem to say. Glug uh, will, will nudge, will nudge uh, Scraggs in the back and say, Offer them one of them sparkly eggs. See if they want some. <laughs> I'm worried they might try to grind me for XP. Stupid grinding, damn! Uh, uh. I, I do. I will. We'll pull out a Faberge egg and like, like put it, put it on the ground and just kind of roll it towards one of them. The the, the wizard is the uh, is the one closest to you. You're going to pull out a Faberge egg uh, and display it like a fine glass of shanty and then roll it gently down the corridor towards the wizard. Is, are you doing this in a sort of a, an offering sort of a, a peace offering? Yeah. Sort of yeah. Missionary? Like a, like a, Hey, here, here's this. We're, we're right. friends. This is going to be a, a social sort of, you're trying to imply, you know, you take this, you know, we're, we're, we're cool. Aren't we? We're cool. You take the Fabergé egg and, and, you know, we're simpatico. It's all good. Um, it's going to be a smarts test, and um, of all of the heroes to encounter, the wizard, of course, is the most wily. So uh, the difficulty there is going to be four, and um, the you've you've got a, a also a carrying an owlbear egg, so that's one extraction dice uh, in that pool as well. So a difficulty of four with one extraction dice. It, um, it is, is good to know that. or hairy wanting to assist in any way i'm just not sure how because glug would totally beat the crap out of them if they even like looked at him funny i don't I know how that, we can help that harry will like try harry looks just kind of generally like 
sad and anxious all the time. And so I think that I will do like really big eyes and just try to be like, oh, don't hurt us. And hands like, behind the back give some assistance yeah yeah scratching exactly. one toe on the floor yeah. in the dust yeah okay okay um, um it's good um, to know that that scrag is smarter than the average wizard also. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, very good so um harry you can add half your smarts uh, or rather or i should down? say scrag you can you can you can add half of um harry's smarts to your role round up or down uh, are running up. So that would be two then. Moves us from failing that because they had two fives and I only knocked out one of them to us succeeding because one of those dice was a six. And so we cross out one six, the highest is a skill die. Uh, and those, those got that goblin smarts and charm wins again. Very nice. Um, and what did you get on your extraction dice? Uh, my extraction was a five, so we're good. All right, awesome. Um, not a problem. All right, you roll the Fabergé egg down the corridor, um, and the 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 wizard who had at the moment levelled his staff uh, at you in preparation of casting something like a magic missile and um, uh, blowing you to oblivion and hopefully scoring some sweet sweet XP into the bargain. Um, happens to have noticed the the as 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 there's done so and the end of the staff is sort of whipping with lightning and and sparking um, the the effect of all of that lighting on the the rubies and emeralds and other gems as uh, on the Fabergé egg as it rolling down the corridor is um, pretty stunning. And uh, the the wizard's eyes light up at the the side of this Fabergé egg and the glinting, uh, bejeweled surface of it. Um, you can see that the, the the flames and sparkle in the end of the wizard die down, and the wizard puts back their staff um, and puts out, leans down and reaches out one hand, and the Fabergé egg gently rolls into their palm, and they raise it up. Uh, looking at it, raising an eyebrow. Uh, you can see that the, the, the two paladins, of course, knowing their role in any classic party, um, step on either flank of the wizard and then uh, in front of him, protecting um, our non-combat asset um, from any potential assault there, uh, particularly from that uh, mean-looking goblin in the rear uh, of your trio. Uh, the one with the stick, and um, they they move into a defensive position in front of the wizard. Both of them, however, still looking at this Fabergé egg. Um, the, the wizard sort of reaches out with the staff to halt them. Uh, you can see that they're about to advance upon you for some, um, for some XP grinding. And they um, take in the wizard's sort of unspoken command, and the wizard sort of eyes... Um, with a with an, a raised eyebrow, that satchel of yours, uh, Scrag, uh, and there's just a little bit of a glint at the top of it. Uh, I I call out. I, I know that like most adventurers aren't very smart, um, but I know that wizards sometimes know more than one language. So like Scrag's gonna rotate through like some basic greetings in a couple of different monstrous tongues. So I'm gonna like the uh, goblin. Hobgoblin, troll, orc, um, and and dwarf, and see if I get any sort of response from this uh, this you know dumb adventurer. Um, yeah, yeah, you you roll through a number of different greetings, um, and um, you know the the the, the wizard uh, sort of raises is sort of a, a moment of recognition as as um, as you touch on one. And um, it responds, um, you know, holds up the Fabergé egg and, and points to the Fabergé egg. And I, I go, uh, you want to kill uh, creatures? <laughs> um, uh, egg like that and creatures down the hallway. Uh, you go get them. 
Um, very good. Um, you can see the the, the wizard. Um, You're so dumb. <laughs> trans- I say back in Goblin. Translating you, uh, translating for the Paladin uh, that are there. Um, I'm going to get a. I want to get a smarts test here, uh, Scrag, because uh, I've never encountered a reasonable adventuring party uh, in my life. No, but I'm really hoping to become this adventurous party's cute and lovable NPC that the party really oh, latches on to. That is okay. so cool. Um, Let, let's know. drop that difficulty down to three. Then. <laughs> Like I'm not, I'm not the, I'm not the, I'm not the NPC that they wanted to encounter that the GM planned on them attaching to. But that is, that is what my hope is. Um, this is what's happening, right? I've yeah. got you. I'll be able to show back up in their adventures from time to time. <laughs> um, and I got to roll one. Um, all right, so s- I got a six, uh, and they have threes and a one. Um, so I'm highest on the skill die. And a five again on the uh, the egg die. So nice, um, not a problem. The um, you you've you've managed to um, convince them that um, that you guys are are the helpful sort of NPC after all, um, and you know they have thoroughly convinced you that they are the foolish NPC. And so they, um, they, they make their way down towards you and there's a very awkward shuffling of, of bodies as the three of you move to the side and uh, the three of them sort of shuffle around you. Um, back through the room, down the corridor and in the kitchen, you can hear some, some um, shouting and discussion and that tramping of armoured boot uh, is coming further down the... Uh, coming closer and closer down the corridor. The guards have obviously encountered the kitchen, spoken to the chef, and then pursued you further down the corridor. Um, they're about to get the shock of their lives um, as the Paladins um, draw their their gleaming blades and step through that door um, into the antechamber uh, and towards the um, the waiting uh, or the approaching um, guards. Uh, that leaves the three of you uh, in the corridor on your own. What would you like to do? We need to get the hell out. That was too close. I was going to, like, you know, beat up their knees. Look, I, I, know, I, know, you, I, know, I, know, I know you got the boots. I know you got the boots and you're yeah, ready to go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I'm 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 pretty sure we can get a couple more eggs before we get out of here. Like at least one more each. How hungry are you? Seriously. Uh, but like it's, also, it's... what if we found where they keep the owl bears and then we let them all go and then the king can never have omelets again. And then we've got the eggs. I Sure. But the king can't have any more omelets and the owl bears are free. I think Harry's saying that they want the owl bears free and we are supposed to give back the eggs. I think no, that's no. All- yeah? You can keep the eggs. Okay. I don't want the king to have any eggs. Okay, okay. Got yeah, got yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah now, yeah. if they hatch before then, their owl bears not, they're not eggs anymore. Then we got to set them free. Yeah. So we should okay. go quick so they don't hatch. But I'm <laughs> okay. just saying. Okay. All right. All right. I'll, I'll go with that plan. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. So you you're progressing down the corridor. There's a there's a a large door at the end of it. Uh, opening that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Can I get? Hopefully please... there'll be owl bears here. <laughs> They're not gonna kill us. That's the no kings, part. no eggs. Our new. The the, right, the belonging open- outside belonging hack of Albert <laughs> You open up um you open up the this door. Uh now this is close to the scullery, and as I said, this corridor is a large wide corridor. Um close to the the servants' entrance. This is close to the scullery. Um in through this door is a, a Luckily for for um, Harry, is a um, owl bear hatchery. 
Um, there is in here a number of uh, nests. Uh, can I get a D6, please, from Alicia? Three. The perfect nice. number of nests. There is uh, three um, nests in here, very large uh, sort of scraggly fur-lined nests um, made out of twigs and bark and other things that uh, owlbears find pleasing to make nests out of. Um, and can I get um, one dice, please, from each of you? Three. One. I also rolled three again. Nice. So in two of the nests, there is one egg. And in the other nest, there is not, it is, it is empty. Um, possibly the egg, the, the nest that was emptied um, when, um, or by the, the um, workers in the scullery. Um, so there are two eggs in this room. There is also um, an owlbear. Um, but can I get, um, can I get please a D6? Um, please from one of you. Scrig, you, you open the door. You were the one. Five. One to go on to find some eggs. A five. Um, all right. So you, you come into the room. Um, this is a large, uh, large room, um, lots of straw around the place. There are three nests. There's two eggs in the room. Um, there is um, here um, an owlbear and a baby owlbear. And they uh, look to be up to something highly suspicious. <laughs> Um, in they, they were nestled over in the corner um, and doing something. looks like they're piling something up over in the corner. Um, not quite sure what it might be. It looks like the remnants of some tapestries perhaps and some straw and other bits and bobs. Um, and as you come in, they turn around with a look on their faces of, um, of, a, of a dog that's just been caught getting into the treats 10. Uh, there's a look of, uh, of shock on their face uh, that they can't believe they've been caught out doing whatever it is that they're doing at this point in time. So my instinct is to immediately like put my hands up sort of like distance, but also like, I'm not going to hurt you kind of like both <laughs> protecting myself and indicating we won't hurt the owl bears. And I'm going to say, because obviously I don't know if Alvers can speak goblin, but I'm just gonna say it. Do you want to be free? The owlbear sort of tilts its head. Uh, and if you've ever seen a bear tilt its head through almost 180 degrees, it can be quite disturbing. So the owlbear tilts its head and because it's an owlbear, the head rotates almost wholly uh, around. Uh, and looks at you with two large um, saucer-sized eyes. Um, can I get a D6, please, from, um, from one of you? Let's go with um, Harry. Five. Not a problem. Um, all right. So you can see as it sort of rotated its head around, it's sort of looking at you very quizzically uh, and starts to sort of uh, it raises itself up onto its uh, four very, very large feet um, and it rotates its head back around and takes a couple of steps forward. Can I get, I might get a, um, a smarts test from you if I could, please, Alicia, and we're going to add in um, our difficulty of, um, we're going to go two and your one, uh, extraction dice, please. I mean, if anyone has an idea about how to make it clear to the I mean, animal bears that I want to free them. Glug would, would, would basically like go to the door and literally like fling it open and then kind of like, you know, do the shooing motion with the other hand, you know, like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Well, um, Glug, you can add 
Uh, oh, sorry, um, Alicia, you can add half of Glug's smarts rounding up to your roll. One. Oh. Oh. One flew right off the table. Let's try that again. Okay. All right. So I cancel out one of their twos. And then I rolled three threes and a six. So the highest die is a skill die at a six. Excellent. So a success. You managed to, with gentle, peaceful movements, uh, indicate that you pose no threat to the owl bear. Um, you're not carrying the sort of sharp sticks that normal worker goblins are carrying when they come in to harvest the eggs. Um, and so the owl bear is just watching you quizzically and, and sort of goes back on its haunches to, to take you in. Uh, the baby sort of trots around uh, the, the front of the, the owl bear um, and nestles in with, uh, with, the, with the mother there um, and is sort of watching you with, um, with large eyes also. Um, what did you roll on your extraction dice? Oh, I forgot my extraction dice. Hold on. Three. No further complication from that front. Uh, excellent. So you have um, you've managed to placate the the owl bear for now. Um, what would you like to do, Scrag? With all of this um, taking place in front of you, you've got um, Harry there moving forwards, working some owl bear magic here. Um, calming uh, this this great uh, beast uh, to a standstill as it sort of s sits down to to take you in. What are you doing at this juncture? Um, I am quickly moving around to all of these nests, um, staying far away from whatever it is they're doing, um, and uh, I'm I'm just I'm one for one swapping the fabric eggs I have for other eggs. Nice. So the three nests, three Fabergé eggs, um, and you're doing the quick sort of the Indiana Jones switcheroo um, with the the owlbear egg and the um, the Fabergé egg. Um, the owlbear is watching um, as you are moving around the room, and um, the the baby also is is watching what is happening here. I'm going to get. Um, I might get a, a, a smarts test from you if I could against a difficulty of, let's say, th um, three. And there's these, oh, let's say two. We'll say a difficulty of two. The owlbears are not unused to their eggs being harvested or what they are not used to is them being replaced with shiny Fabergé eggs. Yeah. I um, uh, this is, uh, uh, I have three dice left and they have no dice left. Nice. And what was your extraction dice? Oh, that's a great question. Oh yeah, baby. It's a one. Uh... <laughs> nice. Okay. So uh, you've rolled a one, um, on your extraction, um, dice. So, um, if you roll a one, the skill test is resolved as normal, uh, but there's been an added complication, okay? So you're currently now carrying um, three owlbear eggs and you have managed to get rid of the three, um, the three Fabergé eggs that you were still holding on to, if I'm, if I'm right in saying. Um, yeah, that is correct. Um, yeah. I, I should be picking up three more eggs or, or maybe I'm going to end up picking up four more eggs. Let's see. I'm trying to get, trying to get two for everybody. Um, yep. so uh, there's only two eggs in the room. Okay. Um, but you've managed to get both of those. So your extraction box is, is up to a, a is three. up to a two. There is an added complication, however. Um, so your your extraction box will be up to three. Yeah. Um, there's an uh, there. You've got your um, you've. However, you roll the one on your extraction um, dice, so that is a complication. 
Um, the sound of fighting um, from the corridor behind you uh, suddenly intensifies um, and you can see the owlbear sort of um, back away um, into the corner. It doesn't like the sound of, of what's happening further down that corridor. And <coughs> um, back into the corner where um, it was sort of suspiciously, um, you know, up to something. Um, with a wary eye on the the three of you and, and well um, aware that you perhaps mean it no harm, that you're no threat, uh, it, it sort of starts to pour at the coverings that had been piling in the corner before. Um, and so it, it scratches all of that aside and you can see that um, in its um, in its state that it's oh sorry that that it's been um, been oh, sorry pulls aside the, the 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 straw and the other coverings that it's managed to to make in the corner um, and it and what you what what is revealed to you underneath that looks like this this owl bear has been going Shawshank Redemption on its. Um, on its egg hatchery and has managed to, to dig something of a tunnel down um, underneath. It's not quite big enough um, for an owl bear, but it's certainly big enough for a baby owl bear. Um, and with its sort of its its beak, it's sort of encouraging the baby owl bear to go down into the tunnel, and it's making sort of scrar scrar noises as it's um, trying to encourage its baby to go down into this tunnel. Uh, you're not quite sure where the tunnel might lead, um, but um, the baby seems to be somewhat hesitant. Um, and the the owl bear sort of turns to to take the three of you in as as um, as it's doing this. <laughs> I want to leave this owl bear behind now. And become emotionally I attached. I'm like, can we rapidly I, widen the tunnel? Well, I mean, like the other suggestion that I was that that I was going to have, like Glug is like contemplating this. It's like, you know, I'd like would be saying it's like. Harry, go take the baby and go down that tunnel. I'll cover your exit. It's like maybe, maybe Mama wants to help. Yeah, that's. I, I'll do that. I'll like move towards the tunnel, like slowly, still, like keeping an eye, and like trying to gesture that I'm gonna go down the tunnel and like follow me, follow me. And as I, how, how too small for the adult owl bear is it? Um, it, it's really a matter of shoulders. Like the, the, you know, the owlbear is quite a, a large creature. Um, and so, you know, it, it's managed to make a sizable, um, hole here and, and keep it concealed from whatever foolish goblins have come in. Um, it's just, it's just, it's just a little too small for the, the wide shoulders of the, of the mother. Um, certainly large enough, however, for the baby. Um, and you, you know, as I said, the, the mother is sort of trying to encourage with its beak, uh, and with some soft, uh, scrrr noises, uh, its baby to, uh, to take the tunnel. Uh, and the How sound of that you... fighting is sort of, um, moving a little bit closer, um, as all of this is taking place. <laughs> yeah. Glug is at the door and then just like, you know, like getting ready with the, you know, <laughs> If I try to like dig at the sides of this tunnel, is it tough or could I easily make it bigger? Um, this is the the Goblin King's palace and the, the hatchery um, up in the palace. So this tunnel leads down potentially, um, you know, into a tunnel system or a sewage system or, a, you know, the dungeons or who knows underneath the, the palace proper. Um, but the owlbears managed to sort of break down through the floor and uh, managed to scratch a fair, um, a fair hole into the, into the floor and in the bottom part of the wall. 
um, you could have a look at it with a, with a smarts test and see if if you could cause a you know some some sort of structural collapse mm-hmm. if it's a little bit weak yeah. here a little bit weak there if you could dig away a little bit would some of the floor fall through or the flagging fall through uh, and potentially widen that that hole absolutely yeah let's let's i'm also very strong so i'm hoping maybe i can oh well that's the other option is that you could grab hold of what looks to be a relatively weak area and just through dint of your strength and alone try and tear the um that 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 hole wider that's that's what we're gonna do i'm gonna I'm, i'm i've got like a gentle giant thing going on so let's put that strength to use and see if we can tear away at the floor um, what is the difficulty going to be? Um, look, you know, it's when we're not we're not beating around the bush. It is a it is a palace. There's you know this is stone flagging. It's built on a foundation. Uh, we'll make the difficulty a a three because there's already been some damage done. Uh, it's not a hundred percent structurally sound, but it's still relatively strong. Uh, and you're going to add uh, one dice in there, of course, for your extraction yep. um, your extraction pool. All right, I cancelled out all of their dice, leaving me with a four as the highest skill dice, and I got a three on my extraction roll. Nice. All right, so you've managed to to not only shield the egg from any falling masonry, uh, but you've sort of clambered down into this hole uh, as best you can, and, and have gripped with your your mighty hands the the flagging above, and just managed to pull down um you know some of that flagging and work it free throw it into the tunnel drag it down um and um just make that opening wide enough just for the the mother to squeeze through um she nudges the baby down into the tunnel um and then follows directly afterwards um you harry are in a tunnel wide enough for one owlbear um in between you and the hatchery is a baby owlbear and a mother owlbear blocking the tunnel and the tunnel itself leads away behind you um and i just read in the comments just in regards to taking a bio break um well i was gonna say I, this actually might be i know we were gonna play just kind of a short session so this might yep. be a good fade to black moment as we slide down uh, into the depths um and we'll take a short five minute break and come back and do our post game uh conversation if that works for everybody sounds good all right, we are playing uh, Albear and Omelet. We're going to come back in just one minute to do our reaction roll, talk about what it was like to play the game. Uh, if you want to drop any questions you have if you're watching now in the chat, please do that. We'll be back in just one moment.
Uh, and we are back here live on Plus One EXP's Roll for Content channel. Uh, just finished up a uh, a taste of an adventure uh, for Albert Omelette uh, by Giles Pritchard. Uh, Pritchard, um, it'll be coming to Kickstarter. Giles, when are you headed to Kickstarter? Um, I'll be hitting the launch button tomorrow. So awesome. in about. Um, probably in about 12 hours. Awesome. Uh, and so we are going to do our reaction roll. Reaction roll is a live stream inside of a live stream. It's our chance to sit down with the creator whose game we just played and talk to them about playing that game today. Like I said, uh, we are sitting down with Giles Pritchard um, from Cardock Press. 
Um, and I'm very excited to uh, talk about what we thought about the game. We just talked about the fact that your game's going live sometime uh, tomorrow in Australia. It'll go live everywhere around the world, but um, you know what tomorrow means at this point uh, it varies <laughs> depending on what what part of the world you're in. But this weekend, or if you're watching this later on, uh, it should already uh, be live. You can head down to the link right below my face, ttrpg.link slash uh, O-O-K-S, or OOKS, I guess, uh, to... Um, I had to check out that campaign. Um, but uh, I had a blast playing, but let's hear about what some other folks uh, thought about it. Uh, Alicia, let's start with you. Uh, tell people who you are, what you do, and what it was like to play Albert Omelette. Yes, hello again. I am Alicia. If you are just tuning in, that's who I am. I I design games, and and because of that, I like to play other people's games and be like, man, why did I not think of that idea? Which is me every time I play a game. <laughs> um i i loved this i loved the I, i'm a sucker for like a rules light kind of game i don't want to have a 500 page rule book to have to get through before i play the game and so i really love that i could sit down this morning read through the rules and be like all right i know what i'm doing let's go so i was a big fan of that i love goblins not as much as I love Cobalt, so there's like a tiny part of me that Whoa. wants to see a Cobalt version of this. But um, I, I love Goblins, and it just felt like, I thought the theming was like perfect. I understand exactly like the world. I love this like self-referential nature of it with like the heroes and all of that stuff. So it just really all came together for me. It was easy to sit down and play and understand exactly what was going on. Um, not just mechanically, but thematically. Awesome. Uh, did you have any questions you wanted to ask Giles about the game, the creation, anything other part of the design process? And if you need time to think and come back to that, that's totally okay also. We never got to use any moonshine. So I, it's not so much a question, so much as like maybe sad, and I would like to see that moonshine come in play. I think for the most part we were all rolling really well. So, And I'll probably set the difficulties um, quite um, low. So moonshine, usually, you know, you'd use it to, you can use it to, you know, um, flip over a dice, for example. So if you've got a really high difficulty dice in there, you might use it to flip that over or a, a skill dice you might use to flip over. Or if you take a lot of damage, then, um, you know, that might be the case as well. Um, and I guess you guys were pretty lucky, like, um, you know, you've got a one in three chance, I think, Mads, of, of running into Glonk uh, anytime you come across goblins. And, you know, we got that goblin goal straight off the bat and then, um, you know, the first room that we encountered was a scullery and there was just enough owlbear eggs for everybody in there. And, um, you know, and, and that sort of suited perfectly because we wanted it to be a shorter session. Um, but yeah, I definitely could have added a bit more difficulty in there, a few more complications in there. But um, Moonshine is just one of those added things, I guess, um, to mess with how uh, the players give the players a little bit more control over the dice. Um, but it's a sort of a, a risk reward system as well, because the more of it you have, the more extraction dice you are going to be adding to your pool, and and the more chance that there's going to be complications, and um, or that you're going to have to roll on the oh no table um, if something if you're, if you're carrying eggs and this and something happens. So, awesome, um, I love it. Uh, Mads, why don't you tell people who you are, what you do, and what it was like to play Albert Omelet. All right. So, hi, I'm Mads, um, and um, I'm known as Madeline Kali um, across the board for my YouTube channel, as well as um, on my uh, tiny podcast, Stories from Chaos Edge. <laughs> um, and uh, this was great. I mean, this was, again, I, as Alicia said, this was a wonderfully rules light game that, you know, I felt comfortable, like, you know, just coming in out of nowhere and <laughs> just picking it up and playing and then you know Giles you ran it like very smoothly I mean like you know it's like I didn't have any problems like you know you told me what to roll and I understood just by kind of skimming the rules like what this meant and why I could just go ahead and just do it and then just make the comparison um just from the from the get-go so this was really awesome I mean and uh yeah I mean like the use of the moonshine like you know would be really great because then that's just like another element of the character sheet that we're like oh we set it up but we didn't get to use it so yep. um and then the armor thing I mean I didn't think we had any armor or we didn't have an opportunity to pick any up but I mean it didn't seem to matter because again we were rolling so well <laughs> that it was like ah, 
we're just going to beat everything up. It was fine. And uh, that was kind of what I was aiming for, for this character anyway. Um, like somebody who's just going to like beat shit up and then like just keep going. Um, the kobolds idea would be great as an expansion pack for this. Um, and then like, you know, my only thing about like, you know, doing kind of like dungeon crawl type stuff is like, we need a gelatinous cube in here. If not a gelatinous Ooh. cube, then like some kind of gelatinous pudding. I don't know. Something just, you know, something to kind of clean out the dungeon or something. I mean, that's just my personal <laughs> wish. I have I have this. It's like this is my gelatinous die. Right. That's by <laughs> Justin Soros over at Severed Books. <laughs> so, yes, big fan. <laughs> and oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, this was fun. And then the secret goals. I mean, like, you know, again, lucked out for doing that. But I mean, it was beautiful because I mean, it just like gave that that nice little drive thing um, for the character. So like, one more reason to go into doing this, not just for the eggs, but for damn it, I stole those shoes. I want them. <laughs> I, <laughs> and I'll, go ahead. Oh, you got Tony. Sorry. I was going to say it was peak sneaker culture for you to be like. Oh man, I don't want to mess these shoes up. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna get into it, and and how mad were you when you saw he's actually wearing the shoes to do this bastard. type of work? It Total was very, bastard. it was like perfect sneakerhead yes. culture. Like I am not one, but I have a child in my house who is one, and like, or like, hey, yeah, we're gonna go walk over here. If I had known we were walking, I would have worn different shoes. You're wearing <laughs> sneakers, yeah, but I don't want to walk a long distance in them on the road. Like, da -da -da. I'm like. Oh, my dusty and dirty no right. oh my god <laughs> i just loved i loved that moment of like i don't want to ruin these cool shoes no no um so you gonna say, Giles? oh no i was just gonna say um um it, i think you know with with that encounter right at the start too it sort of really helped kickstart the action like you know you guys um you know you, you presented with you know, you're in and you know Thing, this is happening and and you could do x y and z but i you know really sort of you know you launched into um the the action straight away there's glonk you know and and this is it right we're not going to let these guys pass so that that really sort of kick-started i guess the action in that regard and and worked really well i think in this in this um you know today anyway yeah um that's awesome. Uh, did you have any questions you wanted to ask, Mads? Not really. I mean, again, you know, just uh, uh, like, you know, just a quick skimming of the rules. I mean, like it's 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 a, like a great premise. I mean, like, you know, it keeps it simple and especially for for the brevity of it. I mean, like, you know, you want to keep it rules light and then you have some options, but like not so many that you're like, oh, shit, what do I do? You know, I mean, I think this would from like doing it as a player was really cool and then like you know you were a good guide and a good keeper you know facilitator for this obviously <laughs> um and it would just be interesting to go on the other side and then now try to run it and then mm. like you know see like you know what i come with come up with with the tables and the um the different uh <laughs> options for depending on how they roll on their extraction or one of the other things um for like randomness I mean, this this would be pretty cool to just kind of like quick one shot, you know, test it out. I mean, that's pretty much what I'm doing on my channel for the most part is just like doing one shots um, because it's like, you know, quick, easy, learn the game, you know, and like learn by playing. So and when I when I designed it, it was really, you know, originally it was designed as a as a mini game, you know, and and just something to sort of throw up on itch and, um, you know, all of that sort of stuff. And And when. After Foundlings, um, after I did Foundlings earlier, the end of last year at the start of this year, um, and you know, the 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 just the cost of shipping for that was was really ridiculous, and um, you know, I wish I could have charged less than what I did, and and um, but you know, like I I charged less than what it cost me for shipping and it was it was still exorbitant for my backers um and I, I and i wanted to think you know how can i do this um and do it in a way that makes that you know a little bit more inexpensive and one of them is obviously lo localized printing uh was an option um but i thought you know i've always wanted to do an a6 game as as well um 
And so I thought it'd be nice to sort of experiment with that and sort of pick a game that has a very specific sort of premise, um, you know, that that it's got a, a, a really, um, you know, an obvious setup, an obvious sort of conclusion to it. It's got a, a very direct through line in terms of its story um, and something that's doable in an A6 zine of the size that it's going to be. Um, and then in that, you know, you talked about the armor before, you know, there, there are a bunch of also optional rules in there. Um, one of them we did use, which was the character secret goals. Um, but um, there are others like there are rules for the characters getting armor. There are rules for um, magic item complications so that if you find a magic item, then you can roll on this chart and it might, you know, have, might do something unexpected. Um and so there are those rules that you can throw in to sort of add an element of chaos, but you don't need to either. Um, and then one thing that I really wanted to do with it was to have that system at the end, you know, there's, I think the last, I don't know how many pages um, it is, but the last few, and there's, there's rules for traps and poison and um, some other bits and pieces in there as well. Um, but the the last pages are all um you know random encounter pages R roll for corridor roll for the number of doors in a room roll for what is the palace room that you're entering or the dungeon room that you're entering if you happen to be adventuring in a dungeon um what are the encounters that you might come across in a palace or a dungeon what are the challenges if it's a challenge that you encounter what are the goblins if you encounter goblins are the heroes if you encounter heroes are the monsters if you encounter monsters what are they doing what's happening in the room um, and then what's the vibe of the room? You know, what, what's, what's the room feel like when you walk in? Um, and there's, there's also a table for some random names in there as well, which I had a lot of fun writing. Um, but all of that was really to sort of put that emphasis on the idea that you can pick it up and sort of run it without a, a lot of preparation. There's some optional things you can throw in if you want to, you don't need to. Um, but that was the, the sort of the premise of the design. Um, and then Alicia, you talked about, you know, doing something with kobolds, you know, I've got, I'm working on another game in the same vein as this, um, at the moment that is about a group of dwarves that have been, um, imprisoned by the elf king, um, and their burglar has got them out. Um, but the burglar's plan to escape is ridiculous. Uh, and so, you know, the dwarves are on, on on their own jam, you know, wandering about the Elf King's palace. So, again, just that idea of this this is a story. It's it's got a, quite a, a strong focus, and then how can the mechanics sort of support that and work with that? Um, and and that was sort of the design premise when I come when when I was working on Albert Omelette, and and the reasons why it's sort of structured the way it is, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, I had a blast. Um, I record what a lot of other people said. Uh, it actually vibes wise, especially as you talk about some of the other stuff you're looking at. Runaway Hirelings by Thomas Nova Cell, which um, is a tremendously underrated game um, that had a huge influence on me um, in my early design practice, also, too. Um, the procedural generation, the continue exploration, the. Um, um, I, one of the things we didn't also get to see that is in there that I really love is one of the. One of the entries on the random encounter table is um, a room you, the players came up with. And you had asked Alicia and I beforehand uh, to come up with one, and Mads jumped out at the last minute, so didn't get that same ask. But, like, it is one of the options. And I love having – Alicia and I having written them – and then going back and reading your entries, like Alicia and I each wrote like paragraphs long entries. And your, entries your entries are all like, it's a this, it's this. Uh, it may have eggs question mark, moonshine question, like, which is fine, which is totally. But I mean, like, I do love that part of it is this like, hey, players, before we get started, each of you jot down some ideas about a room. We're going to put that in the pile also, too. And we might see those as we come across things is a really fun way to have them kind of enter into the space also too um it's also just a fun way to kind of keep on collecting them if you're going to come back play a, like a short campaign like um like continue to build more and more out with just your players at your table is a very fun vibe uh for something you could be doing also too or even just a like hey every player roll up uh, a couple of things and we'll put that in the room or go through and pick and we're just, we're just going to design a dungeon together we just won't know until we get there 
what's connecting things is a very cool piece of this game that I feel like we didn't get to showcase uh, on stream. Yeah. And so, I, um, and I, to be honest, I, um, you know, I was, you know, nervous about getting on with you guys. You, you know, you're, um, you know, Tony and Alicia and Mads and, and thank you guys for, for, you know, having me and I, um, and all of that sort of thing. But, you know, you're, um, you know, Tony plus one and Alicia do, do, you know, great game design. And, 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 you know, so I was, you know, a little bit nervous about running all of this. And, um, I have to be honest, I completely forgot that you had written those. Um, <laughs> and I was just like, roll on the table. Oh, this is what it is. Where to go with that? And I really, I should have included one because what you got, what you wrote for those rooms was absolutely fantastic. I absolutely Alicia, love do you, do you want to read your room out, Alicia? I'll read mine out also too. <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah. I, it's so funny because I actually was like, oh, I feel like this is a terrible room, but that's all right. I wrote the queen's cake room. Uh, it's an ornately decorated room that's absolutely stuffed to the brim with delicious and delicate cakes, pastries, and cookies. Uh, navigating without knocking down the patisseries is a challenge, but not impossible. There's a large gramophone playing a recording of the Queen singing opera. The Queen is a terrible singer, but anyone who's ever said that out loud has never been seen again. <laughs> uh, the walls of the room are covered in thick velvet drapes and deep jewel tones of blues and purples. These overflowing tables have golden jugs that definitely some of them hold moonshine and for sure owlbear eggs are hidden on or around the table. And you might find the queen there enjoying a luxurious tea time snack and yelling at her ladies maids. Or at another time of day, you might find an exasperated head maid directing servers as they prepare the room for her majesty. Uh, I created the Alchemist Lurk, which was bubbling cauldrons, expensive glassware, and the sweet smells of sulfur and other chemicals linger in the air. Small goblins and long white coats run around frantically, uh, shuffling ingredients and stirring them into mixtures. A large... Uh, uh, a large vat of alchemist elixir moonshine uh, in the corner with a spigot on the bottom. Uh, the walls are thick stone covered with burn marks and pocked with acid spills. The names of past alchemists written on the walls and crossed through with alarming frequency. Uh, a I tall, <laughs> a tall go goblin with thick goggles and a white coat that actually fits them uh, is putting the finishing touches on a special brew. Uh, near him on the table appears a sing large single uh, egg with a liquid dripping over it. The alchemist is rumored to be able to certainly do four things. Make goblins Goblins taller, burn things, melt things, or turn things to gold. He can also do two unknown things. Um, what's my mind? Uh, allowing for a D6 roll, but also just being like, uh, yeah, I don't know, whatever. Um, can I make up one on the spot? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so basically my, like, you know, my, my made-up room would um, be the Goblin Sauna, which before you even get to the door, like, you can see the... Psh like steaming out of it and then when you open the door then you get hit in the face full on with like this this smoky humidity and then what it is is actually a room that you can fall in if you're not careful because it's essentially a swamp it's got the like the the, the mossy trees it's got the like the sludge on the bottom of it and then like, basically any any like you know high class goblin can go in and then immerse themselves you know as deep as they want and then um, just kind of like, you know, have that mud bath plus the, the, the heat and comfort of the sweat, you know, like just building up in this room. And then if they really want to have a delicacy, then they could bring an owlbear egg in with them and then essentially boil, like, like kind of steam the egg while they're sitting there getting steamed themselves and then have a treat when they're done. <laughs> so I love good. it. I'm so sorry good. I didn't get to any of those. those. Those were so good. I just absolutely loved reading them. No, I love it. I, and I also, I just love, like, I mean, the reality is if somebody writes a really cool room, like, you know, I, I don't know if you're open licensing Albert omelets, but you just do, like, an anthology of here's a bunch of weird rooms uh, that you could go into also, I would write too. so many more rooms. <laughs> <laughs> I, hadn't, I hadn't thought about it, to be honest, but I should do that. I, I um, Open license is one thing I've intended to do with all of my games, and I sort of have intended to do... Um, you know the um, what are they called the the rules document that sort of gives the the SRD yeah. the system reference the SRD yeah yeah so I've been meaning to do an SRD for for all for my three main games which is Corsairs Foundlings and um, and Rascals um, and Albert Omelette now um, but I just it's one of those things that's that's on the to do list but it sort of just keeps getting pushed back and 
um, yeah, I definitely need to do it. And then, yeah, I just love that idea. I hadn't even thought about doing like a, a compilation of these are the these are the player created rooms that you could that you can use. Yeah. But I would love to see something like that. That would be awesome. Even just tossing them in a per chance random generator and being like, you know, like click this for random room. Uh, Cause also, you know, you use them for anything if you want, but um, no, I loved it. Uh, I had a great time. Again, you go to the link down below my face in order to check out the Kickstarter, which launches sometime uh, in the next 24 hours. Uh, and then uh, check it out over the course of the next couple of weeks. Um, I've, I've really loved watching the work you've done over the last couple of years. Giles, it was great to finally have you on. Uh, to play hopefully we get you back uh, some other time in the future you know when it's not 2 a.m in the morning for you uh but um we'll look forward to it either way um uh, we've got a couple of great things coming up tomorrow we've got uh, our apocalypse keys uh, actual play with uh ray uh, josh and sherry is going to keep on going it's part two of an at least three-part series um we may we may pop out on the 24th there also uh in the evening but come back and join us for that as well as apocalypse keys drops live on the 13th, uh, the Colt has a couple of really good things coming up, um, including an interview with Ray this Sunday morning, our time, or in the evening's Philippine time uh, on Sunday. That'll be available also, too. So come back, learn how to make a character, and learn about the influences uh, that uh, jumped into Ray's stuff for uh, creating Apocalypse Keys. Um, we're very, very excited to see this system coming with Evil Hat. I'm very excited to partner with them to make that content. A uh, whole bunch of other stuff coming up, uh, but first and foremost, make sure you hit follow on uh, Albert Omelette for a great uh, one-shot night whenever people don't shut up, short campaign for your next thing, uh, or just fun game to play with people when you have the chance. Um, we've never figured out a good way to end these streams, and at this point, we're not interested in trying. So we're all just going to wave at the screen until I take us offline. Bye, everybody. Thanks for coming. All right. We're